Hi guys, I just moved within New York, still in the same neighborhood, just to a different apartment. And my background is chaos and it's so much worse where I pan to the other side of the room, which I'm not going to do. Um, I've been unpacking about a quarter of a box per night and I've projected that at this pace I should have unpacked almost everything by the time I need to move out of this apartment. I think it's safe to say that Matthew, Kendra, and I are shells of humans at the moment and we're hauling these shells on screen because we love and, and care so much about the Women in Translation Readathon that we do every year. So the book blogger Mada Radzinski started Women in Translation Month for August and then for the past few years Matthew, Kendra, and I have been doing a book to version of this with a week-long readathon typically near the end of August. And this year our dates here, let me check them so I can be specific. They are Saturday, August 14th to Friday, August 20th. I hope this is obvious for anybody watching my channel, but of course we're including trans women with Women in Translation Month because I mean it's not us to include, they're just women. I don't like it's um, sad that I even feel the need to clarify that, but we live in times where I think it's important too. So yes, if you read a book by a trans woman in translation, that absolutely falls under this umbrella. Lila has made the executive decision that it's time for lunch. Viewer, it is not time for lunch. I do sympathize with her with all this fluff in the summer. It's just, it's too hot to live, right? It's too much. It's always funny, this focus on reading in translation and, and making it something that you do consciously is by a definition an English speaker phenomenon for the most part, um, just because it's done very casually and consistently by most people all over the world. And being a foreign rights agent myself, I, I know that a lot of that is due to the flow of traffic in one direction and not so much in the other. But the three of us pride ourselves on our nebulous prompts and they are truly nebulous this year. So they are going to fit whatever native language you happen to be reading in. This year we've made an effort to simplify things with the understanding that most people around the world, um, whatever capacity our brains are operating at, those brains are still like flying the flag at half mast. So we have two prompts and a group book. Now the first prompt is not a novel. That's it. It can be anything else. Essays, short story collections, poetry, topic-based nonfiction and journalism. A myriad of things as long as it's not a novel. Prompt number two is a language that is new to you. So most ideally this would be a language you've never read any translation titles from in the past. But we also realize that not everybody meticulously tracks their reading. Not everybody hates themselves enough to have a Goodreads profile with the world's worst UX or UI or whatever that's called. So um, a, kind of in the spirit of this rule as well is that you can read from a language you haven't read from roughly in the past five years. And I, I really do mean this personally. There can be within communities that like to explore books and translation, there can be some cachet in reading from a language that's not as typical. But for example, for me specifically, even though Japanese literature is so popular generally and an English language booktube, I don't believe that I've read any title translated from Japanese in the last five years. And so for me, that would really add something to my reading diet if I were to find a title from Japanese. I didn't actually choose a title in Japanese for that one, but just, you know, generally thinking about expanding your personal reading, regardless of what anybody else does or what anybody else reads. And then we've had our group book, which as far as we can tell is accessible across ebook and audiobook as well. It is Minor Detail by Adenia Shibley, translated from Arabic by Elizabeth Jacquet. It was, I believe, shortlisted for the National Book Award last year and longlisted for this year's International Booker. This is quite a short title, which we know is helpful for a week-long readathon where you are trying to get to other titles too. And from what I understand, it's about a young woman from Ramallah who discovers something about the rape and murder of a Palestinian teenager 25 years to the day of her own birth. And so she begins investigating this crime and, and becomes obsessed with it. Maybe one of these years we'll have a prompt that's about finding a, a happy book in translation, or at least one that's not so depressing as to leave you comatose on the couch, but it is not this year. So Kendra, Matthew, and I are going to be reading minor detail during the readathon, posting about it on our individual Twitters and on the group Twitter. And then we think in September, Roughly, we're going to be posting some kind of a video with all of us discussing the title and you'll be able to put your thoughts in the comments. A reminder that I'm one of the editors at Open Letters Review and we like to think that we 
punch above our weight, even though we're technically a small journal, it's a great place to get practice writing reviews if that's something that interests you. And as I did last year, I'm having an open call for any full length written reviews about women in translation titles that were published in 2020 or 2021. So the details to contact me are below for that. And I'm happy to go back and forth with some edits. I got some great reviews last year and was intrigued by the titles that people chose as well. So by all means, please approach me if you would like to write a review. Last thing quickly is I'll go over some of the titles that I'm considering for our two prompts. For the one that's not a novel, I'm thinking In Memory of Memory by Maria Stepanova, translated from Russian by Sasha Dugdale or Sasha Dugdale. Um, it says with the death of her aunt, Maria Stepanova is left to sift through an apartment full of faded photographs, old postcards, letters, diaries, and heaps of souvenirs. Carefully reassembled with calm, steady hands, these shards tell the story of how a seemingly ordinary Jewish family somehow managed to survive the myriad persecutions and repressions of the last century. I'm almost positive this isn't a novel, but in the event that it is, or in the event that I have some extra time, I would like to read The Poetry Collection Factor of Tears by Valjana Mort which is translated from Belarusian by Franz Wright and Elizabeth Olker's Wright. I haven't chosen a book for prompt number two, the, the new language to you prompt yet, um, but there are two authors I've wanted to read for a long time who are translated from Croatian. And I was, I was looking through things and I don't believe that I've read a title translated from Croatian before. I've read from Bosnian, from Serbian, from Slovene, from Albanian, from, from all <laughs> up in the Balkans and not from Croatian specifically. So these two authors are Dubrovko Ugrasic and Dasha Durndic. Um, especially tell me about the stress. Is like it Ugrasic or is it Ugrasic? I would love to know below. Lila has thoughts. I don't know how helpful they'll be to me in this moment. I've heard that Ugrasic's books are really complicated typically and are in conversation with a form much more so than with any type of plot or, or, or character-based storytelling, which sounds fantastic. And it is one of the main reasons that I've wanted to read her books previously, especially um, Fox is like at the top of my list for her. But I might start with a more classic plot-based typical novel. Like I, I believe um, Trieste by Durnditch. It sounds like it's more in line with a typical novel at the moment, which might be what works better for me, but I think I'll be choosing between those two amazing writers. Okay, Lila and I are so hot in this apartment without the window open and then the fan on, so I'm going to end the video here, but thank you for watching. Let me know about any books that you are planning to read for the whole month of Women in Translation below, and I'll talk to you guys soon.